Welcome to Freiburg, Germany, a city nestled in the Black Forest with a medieval center, little streams called Bechle, and of course a medieval cathedral. But increasingly, people are coming to Freiburg to see something else. When I came to Freiburg, Germany last month as an exchange student, I looked up a couple of things about the city online. For instance, newspapers from North America to the UK have written that the government does not allow people in this neighborhood, Vauban, to park cars on the street. Behind me is the main street of this district. Does that look car free to you? It wasn't the government that told people they couldn't have cars. The people who built homes here petitioned City Hall so they could have car-free side streets where everyone has their front doors. You can still drive up for loading and unloading, but cars are otherwise parked in the central garages at the edges of the neighborhood, and everything in the middle is a playground. People who live here can run most errands by bike, tram or bus. They don't need cars. So you aren't dependent on cars, which means you aren't dependent on oil. This is my favorite strip. I like to think of it as a bicycle and pedestrian autobahn. Folks who live here are saving money. This is not for the rich, but for the thrifty. Americans used to love streetcars as well. You remember the song, Little Eyes of Jane? I got a house in Baltimore, Little Eyes Jane, streetcar rolling by my door, Little Eyes Jane. It's a song about a young man wooing a young lady, and to do so, he tells her he lives on a streetcar line. Those were the days when public transportation was sexy. Another thing I read was that a lot of the buildings here produce more energy than they consume. Like these, which look pretty fancy. They were made by the architect who lives in this building, which is even fancier. The solar array on the roof spins around during the day to track the sun. And the building itself even turns. One side of it is glass and the other is closed off. When the building needs heat, it faces the sun, and when it gets too hot inside, it turns completely away. Other homes built here don't cost more than in other parts of town. And they don't really look different either. But they have some important things in common with that futuristic house that turns. The south sides are covered with glass to let the heat in. But the overhanging balconies provide shade in the summer to prevent overheating. The rest of the building is closed off and well insulated to keep the heat in. And the building has a ventilation system with heat recovery to provide fresh air even as the temperature is retained. These buildings make do without central heating, even in Germany. Add on a solar roof and the homes produce more energy over the year than residents consume. But still, what about the people who can't afford a new home with a solar roof? And what about all the old buildings we have? Can they be turned into passive houses as well?